guys, Logan Bells here, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my re movie review, uh, specifically a 2019 one. Yes, it's, yes, I am still, still, still doing these 2019 movie, movie reviews, uh, and this one in particular is going to be for Midsummer, a 20, an A24 movie directed and written by Ari Aster. Uh, who also directed Hereditary. This movie stars uh, Florence Pugh and Jay Rayner, and it's about several friends who travel to Sweden as part of Anthropologists and a summer festival that is held every 90 years in the remote hometown of one of them. What begins as a dream vacation in a place where the sun never sets gradually turns into a dark nightmare as the mysterious inhabitants invite them to participate in their disturbing festival activities. I have reviewed uh, Ari Aster or Ari Aster's uh, previous uh, horror film with A24, Hereditary, and I enjoy that film. Uh, it was one. Of, it was very unnerving. It was very mysterious. It was very cre uh, creepy and kind of uh, chill-inducing, I would say. And I can safely say that this film is no exception. Midsummer is, without question, one of the weirdest, most unsettling, and uh, chill-inducing uh, movies I have seen in recent years. And yet, I strangely like it. The performances here are top-notch, most of them at the very least. Uh, a couple of them from Florence Pugh and Jake uh, Rayner. Uh, uh, their relationship uh, was, uh, had, there was so much tension between the two uh, that they're, they're not in particularly uh, breaking up, but that uh, you, uh, they were really thinking that their relationship wasn't going as planned. Uh, it just wasn't going their way. And they're trying to uh, find certain ways to uh, get out of the situations that they were in during their relationship. And the movie builds on that on the tension between the two, you know, testing uh, their their trustworthiness uh, to one another, uh, so to speak. Uh, and I like that. Uh, I like the buildup that this film gave me between the two. And let me also say this. Florence Pugh, oh my God. Now I finally understand why I've been hearing so much about this girl. Because Florence Pugh, was so incredibly spectacular in this movie. You could you could make an argument that this is an Oscar-worthy performance for Best Actress uh, in a at the Academy Awards. Even though she, I, I I didn't think she won it, but uh, nor, nor nominated or was nominated for it. But I can really say that her performance here is just so worthy of being nominated for Best Actress. Uh, th that's how great she is in this movie. She actually carried this movie uh, for me personally with her incredible acting, incredible performance, and I really, really felt for her character. This movie is also strangely funny, uh, I must say. Uh, the comedy somewhat worked with William Jackson Harper's character, Josh, as well as Will Poulter's character, Mark. Uh, really uh, entertaining. Uh, certain lines and certain brief moments that uh, actually came off as funny uh, in a weird way. Um, and I kind of like that. I like how there's at least some semblance of humor, a sense of levity being put at certain points of the film. The cinematography and the camera work are beautiful and well shot. The production designs are nice. The editing is on point, and the suspense, while very, very long, and it's very long due to the runtime of this movie being nearly two and a half hours long, uh, it still was very intense and dark and, and, and gritty uh, psychologically. Uh, uh, it gets you very tensed uh, as the movie progresses. Uh, just how this movie builds up to what was going to happen at the end of the film. Uh, really gets you uh, t uh, cl like clenching to your seat uh, and all the other stuff. It, it just gets you tense, and I like that. Now, as for the issues, which this movie does have certain, 
uh, uh, types of issues. Uh, two major ones, I will say. The first one being this. This movie's attempts at both telling a compelling story and also tackling on certain themes and uh, issues such as grief and relationships uh, are not particularly strong. The way that this movie tells uh, its story uh, that doesn't feel fulfilling to see, to say the least. The movie sets up the the, the tragedy and the grief that was suffered by uh, Danny um, within the first 20 to 25 minutes, and then uh, soon after that, once they visited this this village and this festival of some sorts. Uh, uh, they, it, the film never addresses that uh, again, uh, or even referenced it. Uh, it basically just gone from being what Danny has gone through to now uh, going, uh, being a part of this cult that her and that she and her friends started to uh, become part of. The movie mostly focused on that 75% of the time, I would say, maybe 80. 5% of the time and never addressed what, what went on within the first 20 to 25 minutes. I thought the movie could have ex uh, explored that more. Um, I thought I could have focused on that a, a little bit more with a lot more scenes with, with that type of tragedy. That, that doesn't feel over 100% uh, complete. Uh, like you really uh, get the sense uh, that the movie tries to tackle that and lets you see what it was like uh, about you know how to gr about how people grieve and how how certain things that they do uh, in order to how to you know grieve over a loss of some sorts uh, and how to overcome uh, certain troubling times during a relationship with your significant other. Uh, how the movie tackles on those things doesn't feel over doesn't feel like it or it's earned like you kind of get what I'm saying it doesn't feel like it didn't earn that type of you know attempt at tackling on those uh, aspects those themes but outside of that it it's actually fine at least for me now I will say this once you watch this movie you're gonna uh, feel one of uh, you're going to be part of one of two groups of people after seeing this film. Either you're going to be part of the first group of people that actually love this movie and understand it and respect and appreciate what it was going for, uh, the story and the themes that uh, that are a part of this movie, or uh, you're going to be part of the second group of people that hate this movie and and was like. What the actual hell did I just watch? Like, this movie is just horrible and doesn't really make any sense. Uh, you're, you're going to be at least part of, of one of those two great types of moviegoers and critics, uh, to say the least, because this movie is divisive among moviegoers and, and movie reviewers. And so I'm just letting you know right off the bat, this movie can be very uneasy to watch I'm just telling you that, telling you that right now. It certainly was like that to me. But again, uh, that's your decision. If you want to watch it, good for you. But if you don't want to watch it, okay, that's also good for you. I'm going to give Midsummer a gold medal of honor. So anyway, guys, that is my review for Midsummer. I have another 2019 movie review uh, coming to you as soon as I'm through uploading this one, and it will be uploaded tomorrow. And it's for my review for. Spider-Man Far From Home, the second MCU Spider-Man movie uh, with Tom Holland as Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. Uh, it will be, like I said, it will be uploaded tomorrow. So anyway, guys, that is all that I will say for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it that like button to click. And if you'd like to see future videos from me, make sure to press up there to subscribe. And don't forget to turn on that bell icon so that you'll get notified about my latest videos. Have a great day, and as always, fight the good fight.